Right, so we've been looking at lots of data. We've been looking at lots of data in CSV format. Um, and we've looked at a couple of ways that we can clean up or fix stuff um, either in Excel or right in the P5.js editor that will allow us to you know, kind of work with our data. Um, but there comes a point where we need, we need something a little more powerful. And um, it's almost always the case that the data you find is not in a format that's totally ready to go. And more often than not, it's actually a total, total mess. Um, so I'm gonna show you here um, in this demo how you can use Google Sheets, though this will all work, should work exactly the same in Excel if you prefer. Um, but I like Sheets because you can then also share your data sets and stuff like that. Um, and it's just really easy to use. So um, for this demo, I've gone ahead and grabbed some data related to New Jersey SAT scores. Um, I think since most Stevens students are from New Jersey or nearby, this might be kind of interesting to you. Um, and it gives us, you know, kind of a lot of stuff to work with. So this is the um, original data that I downloaded. Um, this came from, uh, actually, weirdly enough, nj.com. Um, uh, and they, they grabbed it from someplace else um, and sort of reshared it. But I think it's a really interesting and, and a good data set for us to kind of work with. Um, so this is the raw data. And we can see some problems here initially um, that we might want to change. Uh, let me show you what this is going to look like when we're finished. So this is my cleaned up version of the data. Um, not only is it just easier to read and work with, um, I've included some additional columns, calculated some other stuff um, that enables this kind of discovery process with data. And um, we can sort this as well, which is really, really nice. So if I want to look by, uh, that wouldn't be a good one, let's see. Um, we can sort from divergence from the national average SAT scores, or whatever, we can do that. And this makes it really, really easy. Um, OK, so and we're going to go through a bunch of different steps here. So you may uh, find yourself wanting to like jump around or come back to stuff, and, and that would be great. Um, so I've made a copy of my original data. Remember, you always want to keep the original for a couple of reasons. One is you might screw it up, um, and that way you can kind of go back. And the other is that um, you know maybe you realized later that something that was there that you removed was actually something you really wanted, um, or who knows what happens if nj.com like changes how their site works, we can no longer get to this data, or whatever. Um, this kind of is a, a backup in insurance. Um, so I've got here. Um, let's just like take a quick look. So we've got our schools by name right now. That's sorted in alphabetical order. Got a county and a district code and a school code. We've got the name of the district. Um, oh, sorry, the name of the county, the name of the school district. Then we have the math, reading and writing, and total average score for each of these schools. And I think the first thing that we want to do is just do some cleanup. Um, it's kind of a mess. You can see everything's formatted differently. Um, and this is just going to help us work better. Um, I'm actually going to start by removing some columns of data that I don't, um, that I don't need for my purposes. So what we can do is we can select a column like this by clicking on the name of the um, column, right click and do delete. And in fact, we can do this for multiple columns by holding down the shift key. So I don't care about any of these codes or the county name. So I'm gonna delete those. And already, you know, it's just much, much cleaner. Then I'm also, you'll notice that some of these headers are formatted in a way that will let us use them with chart.js. Uh, so no spaces but the math um, is not all capitalized, so it's inconsistent, and the reading and writing has spaces in it. So I'm gonna also go ahead and just rename these. So we'll call this reading and writing. And then this is the total average score, but I think we can name this um, maybe a little, a little clearer. So we could just say um, maybe average SAT, super. Uh, already, you know, already this is just going to like prime it for when we want to work with chart.js. Next thing I want to do is make my, um, you know, the data is getting cut off. And so I can uh, format this really easily by, again, selecting all of the columns here, right click, resize. And then you can either do a specific size or fit to data, which will just automatically make everything fit. And boom, just that already makes this so, so much more readable. We could do a lot of work playing around with formatting, you know, bold, fonts, all that kind of stuff if you wanted to as well. Um, okay, cool. So I think already, you know, that made a big difference. Let's um, also do some transformations to the school and district names. If I look at these, 
I can see that most of the school districts are in all caps, but some of them are not. And the same thing, the schools are kind of a mix. And this means if I'm doing a visualization, <clears throat> it's gonna show me them exactly as they're written. And that inconsistency is gonna be kind of annoying. Depending on the project, you might have to go in and manually fix these things. Um, you know, if you wanted them to be written more kind of normally, rather than all caps, you can see that some of these have abbreviations and whatnot. You know, you might need to, there's a lot of manual work involved here too, but at least for this, we could kind of do this automatically. So I'm gonna click on the column, first the school name, and I'm gonna insert a column next to it like this. And then we're gonna use a really simple formula and formulas are a really powerful part of Sheets and Excel that allow us to do calculations and all that kind of stuff. And we'll see how we're gonna be able to use these in a little bit. Uh, they all start with the equal sign. And in this case, I just wanna convert this to uppercase. So I'm gonna do all of the word upper, um, and the commands are all in uppercase themselves. Then I'm gonna click on the cell that I wanna convert, close the parentheses and hit return. And you'll see two things happen. One is that it converts it to uppercase. And one of the great things I love about Sheets, Excel does not do this, is that it's suggesting, hey, we're pretty sure you might wanna fill this column with the same results. Do you wanna do that? And I'm gonna click yes. So now we've converted this whole thing to that format. Now, you might be thinking, okay, cool, then I could just delete this column here. The problem is when I do that, you'll notice it loses the data, it's gone. And the reason is that we're trying to, um, the, the formula refers to a cell that now no longer exists. And this is kind of a pain, this drives me crazy. I'm sure there's good reasons for this, um, but the, the way to kind of get around this is I'm now gonna click on the column that we created, I'm gonna copy it, and then over here, I'm gonna go to edit, paste special, values only. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna convert whatever the result of the formula was into text. And now this kind of looks the same. I can go ahead and delete my column here and rename this school name like that. So we can do the same thing for the district. Click on this, create a column. You can make it on either side. So we can make one on the left here. We can say equals upper, autofill, boom, copy, and then paste, oops, edit, paste special values only, and there we go. Delete this column, and we're all set. Uh, we should not need to do that for any of these other sections because it's numerical data, um, but I think you know, already then my data set is much cleaner. And if you were ready, now you could just jump right into visualizing your data. You wouldn't need to do anything else. And it's all sort of prepped and ready to go. Just a couple of minutes, really quick cleanup. Um, but the other really great thing about Sheets and Excel is that it, it's an exploratory tool. We can use it to um, see what's here and try to discover stories or questions that we want to um, visualize from our data. So I think the first thing that I'd like to do is just be able to filter this or sort it um, by different columns here and see the results. So what I can do is click on select all of the columns that I have here. You can go to data, create a filter, and you'll notice it highlights them and it gives you this little drop down. And so now, um, right now it's, it's uh, sorted by school name, but let's say I wanna sort by average score. You can do it in ascending or descending order. Um, and it's obviously then going to shuffle all of the other data to match. So we're not gonna lose kind of our order here um, so that we can, we can see now that these uh, schools here have the lowest average SAT score. And um, as we go down, we see some kind of in the middle. I think there's about 400 schools here. So we could see um, this school in uh, Middlesex has the highest score. And in that same way too, we could also then sort by these different parameters. Um, you know, it's a formatting thing, it's not strictly necessary, but it is bothering me now that these are cut off. So once again, I can select my columns, right click, resize to fit. And that'll give us extra room for that little icon that pops up. Um, cool. So. We've cleaned it up, it's looking good. We can do some exploring that way. Let's say we wanna figure out what the average SAT score overall for um, all of New Jersey is. And this is again, where formulas become really, really powerful. So um, I can say equals average, and I'm just over in a random cell over here, average. And we could average a couple of numbers or we can do an entire column. So I can click 
here on E, and you'll notice, hopefully you can see it in the video, it's kind of a weird color. Um, it, the values are E colon E, which basically just means that whole column. And we can see that the average SAT score in total is 1,086, um, and we could label this. So we could say average total. We can also do average uh, math and average reading. So same deal equals average of column, oops, not column D, column C. And then the same thing for reading. And, you know, just as a tool to basically like look through and understand this data, this is really helpful. Um, we will notice that the number formatting is a little funky here. We've got a lot of decimal places, which we may or may not want. In this case, I don't think you can have a fractional SAT score, so this doesn't make a lot of sense. So if I highlight these cells and go up here, um, we can either add decimal places or remove them. And I'm going to go ahead and just click to remove them. So now they're integer numbers. They have no decimal place which is the format we're kind of expecting for this. Um, I'm sure you could think of lots of other interesting things, even just with this data, you could do with a tool like average, you could look by county, you know, lots of things that you could kind of do here. Um, let's see, I think next, um, let's compare these average scores with the average score that um, Stevens students get. Now, if you look on the Stevens website, you find a little bit of this, not maybe as much as as much detail as I would prefer, um, so that we can say here, this would be all NJ, and then we can say Stevens here. So the Stevens score, uh, we don't have total score information, but I do have math, which is between 700 and 780. Um, so we can just kind of like, um, uh, we could just guess here. So let's just say 740 would be in the middle. And then reading is 640 to 710. If I could do that math in my head real quick, 5665, uh, something like that. <laughs> Hopefully I'm getting that math right. Um, so these are the average scores here. And then we could um, determine how uh, much higher or lower these are by saying equal sign. And then we wanna do some math here. So we can do math uh, based on these cells. We don't have to just use functions. So I can say um, the low score is here minus the Steven score would be a difference of, of the state average is 197 points lower. And then again, it's giving me an autofill, which is really nice. And if I double click on this, I can see that it refers to that next row down, which is what I want. Um, and so this would be difference like that. Again, lots of things I'm sure you could think about doing. Um, so, you know, using this as an exploratory tool is usually best if you have a question that you want to ask. If you're like, hmm, I wonder about this. And often it's going to be a dead end, um, but that this is a great tool for sort of exploring those things really quickly. So the first question I want to ask here is, how does each school compare with the national average SAT score? And I've grabbed that data from the College Board. They don't make it super easy to find, though there's a lot here if you look. Um, but I found that the nationwide average scores, I'm just going to shove these over because we're going to need some room. The nationwide average in, um, we have it for reading, writing, and math, um, but I'm just going to use the total. So we'll call this national average. Maybe we should call this NJ average here. So the national average is 1059. And um, you'll notice I'm making a column for this, but then I want to be able to populate this all the way down. And there's a couple ways that you could do this. You could type it, that's a bad way. You could copy paste, but easier is if you click on the cell, you see this little box that appears in the corner. If you hover over it, you get across the arrows. And if I drag it down, it copies that all the way down. And so I'm just gonna go ahead. I mean, it's still a little slow. There are some other ways that you could kind of do this, but for our data, this is totally fine. Um, and I'm just dragging down till we get to the bottom and it'll paste all those values there. Almost there. Perfect. So, you know, there's other ways to kind of do this, but this at least helps us um, do our math in the next step. So now what we want to do is we want to compare um, 
we want to compare to the um, New Jersey average. And again, we need to do some math here. So this will be, uh, it's kind of like what we did with the Stevens numbers. This will be the difference. Um, and so I'm going to say equals the state value. Oh, sorry, I want to do, sorry, not that. I want to do the national value minus the state value. And so this will be the divergence, the difference between the national average and the NJ average. If the number is um, in New Jersey is higher than the average. No, I think I got that backwards. Hang on a second. I'm looking at my notes and I, I clearly did not notate this well enough for myself. I want it to be the state average minus the national average. I think that's right. Yes, okay. So I wanna get negative numbers if it's lower than the national average and positive numbers if it's greater. And then once again, I maybe got the autofill and I sort of lost it here, but we could also just um, uh, sort of uh, copy that down. Oh, and there's another shortcut for this. Sorry, I meant to show you this before. Um, even easier than sort of dragging and waiting. Double click, it just does it for you. It's gonna go all the way down, super easy. So now we can see, yeah, again, schools, right now we're sorting by the New Jersey average. So we're seeing ones that are below the national average. Um, and if we went down or if we add this as a filter, so we'll have to reselect, go to data, turn off filter, and then we re-enable it. And now we can sort by difference. So we can go see which school is highest above the national average. Um, and which one is uh, lowest above the average. So this one is higher. Uh, it's the same one that had the highest overall scores actually. Um, and yeah. So I think this is pretty interesting. Let's ask another question of the data. So let's see how many schools are better at reading and writing than they are at math. So again, I'm gonna make another column here and we'll call this better at reading. And we want to do some math based on, um, oops, based on these two numbers. And you could think of different ways to do this with, you know, um, numerical values, but there's a function called if that's really, really helpful. So I want to know if the reading cell is greater than the math cell, then, so I'm doing a comma here, then give us the response yes. Otherwise, give us the response no. So if D2 is greater than C2, if the writing, the reading value is greater than the math value, print the word yes and otherwise print the word no. And now I can again autofill and I can see that this school is better at math than reading, but we can one more time. I wish maybe there is a way to do this to add an additional sort. I haven't figured that out. So now we can see schools that are not better than math, uh, reading the math, and a few that are, we could also count these. You know, again, this starts to suggest like all these ideas that you might think of. Actually, let's do that. Um, so I wanna know how many schools are better at uh, reading or math. We can again, go over here. I'm gonna say equals count if. So if return some data, count if we'll look for certain um, values. So if H, the column H is the word yes, then it's gonna give me the result. So these are, and again, you know, we wanna label this here, number of schools better at reading. There's 210. We could also do the same thing for no, because in, without context, it's not really that useful. Count if, same column and no. So we can actually see in New Jersey, there are, um, 210 schools that are better in reading and 189 better at math. That's pretty fascinating. Um, oh, and then we can figure out the percentage of these versus all of the schools. Um, so if I, again, add a little label here, this will be the count and this will be the percent. So to calculate percent, this is just basic math here. We're gonna, we know from our data that there's 399 schools. So I'm gonna say the count divided by 399 gives me that um, decimal number. I'm gonna autofill again. Now, um, you'll notice that it's gonna give us a number between zero and one, and we wanna read that in a percent. So you could do the math here, but there's also a button for this, which is just format as percent. It multiplies it by 100, it rounds it, and it puts the percent sign, which makes it easier to read. Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. Next question I'd like to ask is um, how much aid 
uh, financial state aid does each of these schools receive? And once again, I went and found some data. It's very unlikely you're gonna find all the data you want in one place. So I went to the State Department of Education. They do have this data in an Excel format, but it's a mess. Let me show you what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like this. Um, funky formatting, multi-cell, you know, this wouldn't be readable by our code at all. And there's a ton of stuff here. This may suggest to you a bunch of really cool things to explore, special education, transportation, um, you know, per pupil aid, all kinds of really important stuff here. But I don't need all of this. So I can go ahead and clean this up. And I've done this um, ahead of time here, uh, or have I? Nope, I haven't. So let's see if we, if I remember what I did to clean this up. Um, first thing I did was delete all the stuff that I don't want. So I don't, and I didn't make a list of this. Hang on, let's see. Um, my cleaned up data is like this. So I want the county, the district name, the total aid. We're not gonna use the one year change and the percent change, but I left it in there in case you're interested. Um, so we can keep the county and the district name. I don't need the district code. So I can delete that. And I really don't need any of these other ones. So I'm just gonna delete them all like that. Then I can uh, relabel these. So this is county, this will be district name, and this will be total aid. I can then delete these columns. So we looked at deleting rows, but or our columns, but we can delete rows here, right click, delete rows like that. Um, we probably, it looks like everything, the formatting is okay compared to our previous one. We can also uh, resize these to fit. And you'll notice I did this in another tab. And the way you make that tab is just click this little button down here. You can add a sheet. And this is really nice for complex data. You'll notice in the cleaned one as well, I have an info tab that points to all the sources and stuff like that. Um, super. All right. So now I want to, let's just see what's the total aid given um, by the state to schools in New Jersey. So uh, for that, we can use the sum function. This is really, really useful. I use this one a lot. Click the whole tab or the whole column. And I can see here the number is not formatted super cleanly. So I can click on the currency button. It adds commas. And I can see it's what, uh, 15920000000 $22,694 in, um, this is from 2016 to 17. I wasn't able to easily find um, other data. This also matches the SAT data that I have here. Okay, so that's our, our total aid. That's pretty interesting. Um, now we're gonna try something a little fancier. Um, I wanna add some of this um, data to my SAT data. And, but what I want to be able to do is, uh, if we look at our county data here, it's by district, whereas our SAT data is by school. So this is a little hard. We can't just paste that there because it's not kind of going to work. We could uh, consolidate here. Um, there's lots of ways we could approach this, but I think the easiest way is we're going to make a column here that's going to refer to this column here and is going to do some extra work for us. So let's take a look. This is sort of advanced stuff. If it doesn't make a ton of sense here, that's okay. I'll also say I don't ever remember how to do this. This is involves a lot of trial and error for me and a lot of Google searching. So for sure, you know, if you're not using Excel or Sheets all the time, that's going to be something you're going to have to do anyway. Um, okay, so in my new column, I am going to say equals index and then in quotes, single quotes here, I'm gonna to refer to the name of my tab. So aid by county, and you do have to spell it exactly right. And then um, this exclamation point. And what this means is I'm referring to a different um, tab or a different sheet in my overall spreadsheet. And then I wanna grab column C. So that's our, um, our whole thing there. And then I wanna match C2 in this sheet, which is my, um, what is C2? The math score here, is that right? Yes. Um, and then aid by county, B to B and zero. Um, we can do this. Hmm, I got something wrong here. Hang on a second, let's see. Um, in my original, 
Was there something else here? Oh, shoot, I deleted the district name. We needed the district name. Okay, I knew there was something funky going on. Um, we need the district name. I must have deleted something here that's not exactly the same. So instead, so we're getting this NA, it's saying there's a problem. I don't want C2, which is the math score. I want B2, because basically what I wanna do is align the data from the county uh, funding with this spreadsheet. Let's try that again. There we go. So what this is gonna tell me is not um, the aid given to this particular school, but the aid that this school's school district got. So there will be some duplication, but at least it's a pretty good approximation. So I've got this number. I'm gonna, again, double click this little guy here, which will paste it down. Uh, we'll talk about the NA there in a second. And this will be aid to district. We can format and let's make all these currency as well. So it's a little easier to read. Um, one more thing, and then, yeah, let's talk about these NAs. I'm just going to turn off the filter and re-enable that. Oops. Like this. So now we can sort by which schools receive the most funding um, and which received the least. So this is 360,000, which went to these schools here. And we can see some of these are NA and that this one received 715 million. If we look across, it looks like this is in Newark. Um, so why are we getting NAs? There's a couple of reasons. What this means is there's an error. Um, it was unable to calculate. And I think there's a couple of reasons this might happen. One is you might um, have a misspelling. These data sets come from two different places. So it's possible, for example, that uh, you know this uh, was shortened in some way or is just inaccurate in between the data sets. It could be um, that those schools did not receive any funding or there was no data for them or a whole host of potential problems. So those also might be places that you could look into or try to manually fix, or they might be interesting stories like, hmm, why is there no data here? Or why is this data mismatched? You would need to look closer to kind of see. Um, but I think this is really interesting. Um, and we could certainly then start correlating or plotting some of these other data to kind of see. Um, you can certainly do that within Sheets. There are some kind of quick visualization tools. I think better would be to make sure your data is cleaned up in the way you want it to, and then just go to File, um, Download, and you can either do it as Excel if you wanted to work on it locally, or as CSV, and it'll export that, and you should be able to load it right into chart.js. So this is by no means the full picture of what's possible here. Um, there's a ton of functions in, the, in Excel and in Sheets. They really, from my experience, are all the same syntax. So if you find something for Excel, it should probably work. Um, but I would encourage you to start using this as a tool for exploring your data and for, for cleaning it up, certainly, and just kind of seeing what's there. Even if you just do a simple search, um, it can be really, or a sorting, it can be a really powerful way of um, kind of understanding or finding things in the data that you weren't expecting.